is Christopher O'Toole here with ProFX Max, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to read color scopes. Now, you may have seen those weird color waveform liney things in your video editor, and you didn't know what they were for, um, but you figure they're for a purpose, and they're called color scopes, and they're there to help you read the color space in your video, and they can use, even be used for color correction in your video if your video white balance or color correction is a little bit messed up. And in this video, I'm going to be using software DaVinci Resolve, which has five different types of color scopes, and chances are Final Cut or Premiere Pro has these types or some of these types of color scopes in the software. I don't know, I've always used DaVinci Resolve, except for my iMovie days. That was, that was embarrassing. I, I ask you to pardon me for that. But. but without any further of my talking and rambling, let's go and jump into the video. So here in DaVinci Resolve, I have loaded up our beautiful monster, otherwise known as the color page. I actually already clicked to my primary log. Oops. Anyways, or my primary bars. But anyways, um, so here we have our our interface for our color page. And as you notice, the uh, histogram is not showing right now. So what we want to do is, here we're on keyframes. Right here, this is how you keyframe in the color page, by the way, if you didn't know that. And here you have our info for, I guess, the video. And here we have our color scopes. Now... I want to see them bigger, so I just click this right here, and kaboom, there they are. And I want to focus on one at a time, so here are these. Okay, so starting off here, these are our parade scopes, okay? And I'm sure you have no idea what these mean, what this means, considering that they are parading across. So anyways, go and make sure my, okay, my grade is default right here, and you can see this video. Now, these are the parade scopes. These are, these are probably the most common among video editing softwares, and as you can see, these are basically the relative brightness of it. So if I scroll down to when it gets darker, they all shrink down because it's getting darker. And so you have a red, a green, and a blue, because that is the way videos are shot, at least some videos. They are in the RGB format, which means red, green, blue. And so you have your red scale, your green scale, and your blue scale. And these are, this is your parade color scope. Now as you can tell, the red is a bit taller than the green and the blue. That's because the reds are higher. So, to take these down a little bit more, what I like to do is I like to go over here to our gain and turn our luminance mix all the way down. And just take down the reds, okay? And you'll see, I'll get them to about right here, okay? And you can tell that these are also a, a graph of what is on the screen here, okay? You see this tall building right here? That most likely is this or this, okay? So, this is basically a graph of from left to right, left to right. Okay, this is basically a graph of what you see. And even now, with, I think, DaVinci Resolve 16 came animated, animated color scope. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Also, you notice that the blue is a little bit lower. So, if we go over here to our blue, and we drag it up till it's about normal, and there you go. Now, it looks pretty good. Before, you didn't realize it, but it was red. It was huge. It was, it was awful. Yeah. And we've fixed it. So, that is your um, parade color scopes. And the, so, the higher they are the higher, the, the brighter the image is, the lower they are, the darker the image is, and the, this is your red, green, and blue, the, each of these is your red, green, blue scopes, and the higher they are, the higher one is in conjunction with the others, of course, that means that the reds are higher, the reds are brighter, and so they're going to show more, so your red is, your scene is a little bit too red, so you just take your red down, and your red goes down to level with your green, of course, see, I can just change my scene to green, and, or do this, and yeah. Anyways, now, oops, if I want my green to be normal, just, I keep it normal, which I hope you do. Anyways, let's go and reset this, and let's go ahead and jump to our second, which is a waveform. Okay, so this is practically the same thing, except it reads a little bit different. Pretty much all the color scripts, they may have different strengths and weaknesses, but as a generality, they're going to be read practically the same way. So I hope you understand them in this one. Again, let's turn our luminance mix all the way down. And this time, instead of having them split up into thirds vertically, they're one big graph horizontally, and they're kind of all together. You see the red scopes here, the green scope, and the blue scope. Just like before, the red scope's a little bit higher, and the green blue scope's a little bit lower. So once again, we take our red down a little bit till it's about level with that. And then we take our blue scope up a little bit. And then, bam, there we go. We've color graded it again in the same exact way. Now, the waveform is probably, I, I find it a lot easier to color gray or color correct the white balance than I do the parade. Because here you're kind of just kind of guessing as to where the top is. I mean, these bars do help you. But the waveform, you get to stack them on top of each other. Now, yes, you will have them a little bit different here. That's just because the blues are red a little bit different than the reds are. 
but I think stacking these are a lot easier than uh, trying to just kind of guess with the parade. And so these are just kind of red in a big fashion all across here. Again, this is the lower they get. This is pretty much on all color scopes, the lower or all color scopes that are have, you know, are in this format. There are, of course, other color scopes. But the lower it gets, the darker it gets. And as you get darker, you can tell that it gets more blue. And you can tell it gets blue here. So we want to keyframe it in these keyframes over here. But for right now, let's just color grade this last image right here. So let's take this and let's bump it down there. As you can tell, it's getting a little bit better looking. Let's take the red and pull it up a bit. And then there you go. So that was before, that was after. Before, after. And it just looks a lot better. It looks a lot more clean. It doesn't have that same huge blue overtone as it did before. But then, of course, we need to do it. We need to animate it because up here, you know, just, yeah, just look awful. But anyways, so there is your waveform color scope, so let's reset the node grade here, and let's move on to our third, which is a vector script. Now this is a little bit different, okay? Like I said, not everything is in the waveform, and you know, that the higher and lower and everything like that. But the vector scope is actually pretty, pretty powerful, because you have the red, the magenta, the blue, the cyan, the green, and the yellow, okay? Now, of course, this makes sense here, because the red and blue, the, mi the middle of red and blue would be, of course, magenta, and the, the middle of blue and green would be cyan, and the middle of green and red would be yellow. So, let's see, let's, let's go ahead and take this down all the way, and let's see. So here is our color scope right here. Basically, it's sticking off a little bit to the red here, because like before, we reset it, so like before, the reds are a little bit higher. So it's sticking off a little bit red, a little bit yellow, but mostly red, you know, still is sticking about right over here, and this is a lot closer to the red, maybe about right here, actually. And this is a lot closer to the red than the yellow. So let's, again, let's take our Lumix Mix all the way down, and let's change it all the way up into the red, and look, our vector scope is just shooting up there into the red. And take it to the blue, and now it's just blasting the blue to shreds. Oh, almost like a laser bolt. Anyways, and our green, just like that. So we nail our green with that. So let's turn our green a little bit up like that, and turn our red up, and you'll see it all of a sudden starts hitting the yellow right there. If we turn our blue and our green up, it'll start hitting the cyan over here because this is cyan, you know, for CMYK. This is the cyan part of it. So blue and green, and it'll start nailing the cyan. And again, if I tried the red and the blue, it'll start nailing the magenta because, of course, magenta is in between red and blue, and see, it's hitting the magenta. So basically, these are your different colors, and whatever this is pointed towards, like, say, I wanted to change this. This is my least, probably my, one of my least favorite for it because it's not as detailed, I would say, as the other is. But it's, it has different strengths, okay? So, so to, you, basically, to get an even white balance, you want this to be in the center, okay? You don't want to be pointing off in one direction or the other. So pull this a little bit more. And maybe pull the red down a little bit more. And we have it pretty much in the crosshairs. Maybe a little bit more like that. And there you go before, after. And then this really doesn't have a very strong one for, I'm just adjusting my gamma right there, um, maybe the gamma will be a little bit better. This really isn't very powerful, I mean I guess it grows with the brightness and shrinks with the darkness because it can't, it can't guess as many of the colors, but that's fine. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Christopher O'Toole, I give Blender and DaVinci Resolve tutorials. Someday with this channel I hope to give video talks about visual effects and practical effects and different things in movies and so if you like that type of stuff, click that subscribe button, click the bell beside to get notifications. I'm pretty sure you have to go through another procedure as well now. But anyways, back to the tutorial. Now we're on to our fourth one, which is our histogram. Now, you've probably seen your histogram before if you have a DSLR. It's on your histogram. And this is basically the same look as histogram. Now this is read a little bit differently, but it has the same lines as, as your parade and your waveform did, except they're vertical this time, not horizontal. And this time, like your histogram on your DSLR, this over here is bright, and this over here is dark. So basically what we've done is, instead of the dark here, we've rotated it right. Okay, I guess that will be 90 degrees. We've rotated it right 90 degrees. So this is bright, this is dark. And these are your red, your green, and your blue, of course, for RGB. And you can tell your green is a little bit lower and your blue is a little bit lower. So again, everything's showing the same because they're all reading the, the, uh, the white balance. They're all reading it correctly. So again, let's take a luminous mix all the way down. Take our reds down until they're about right there, and take our blues up. Again, about right there. Okay, so they're touching this about. Uh, let's 
So we're going to take our blue up a little bit more, about right there. And again, we've color graded it perfectly. Our white balance is perfect now. And again, at our, at our back, you can see the blue is way too high again. So let's just reload this. Take our green up actually a little bit till about right there. And take our blue way down. Our blue, you are naughty. He has run way too far up. And there you go. And when you take your uh, when you take a lot of your incorrect white balance out of your scene, and you start correcting the white balance, a lot more colors show through than did before. Okay, everything had a sort of blue hue to it, obviously because the blue was way too high, and so you didn't see the true color of these buildings or anything like that. Then when I take it away, everything's blue again. Then when I take all that blue away and you know adjust things correctly, you can now see the correct colors of this building. That's why white correct white balance is so powerful. Because you need the correct color in everything, unless you're, of course, purposely messing up your white balance. But anyways, so we're on to our fifth one, our C-I-E chromaticy, I guess, maybe. <laughs> anyways, um, this is probably the hardest to explain because yeah, it's, just, um, it, it's, it's hard to kind of capture what it's like. But anyways, this is a perfect, um, this right here is, this of course is where our color is. And this is your color. Okay, so your blues and your purples are down here, and your it fades to red, then fades to green, then fades to blue. This is basically, our colors are ranging from blue to red, and then a little green up here. And since this is a perfect, sh this is sort of a weird shape right now, I know. But basically, what it is, is you can basically take over here, you can take a spot, and over here you can take a spot, and... And in between these two points will be the perfect mid color between these two points. And you can rotate these spots anywhere on the edge of it, and it will be the perfect middle of these two colors, if you get what I'm saying. So over here is red, and over here is blue. Perfectly in between here, of course, you can see is purple. Over here is yellow, and over here is blue, and you can see green is in between it. So wherever you rotate this side right here, and this side, Always in the middle of that line, okay, there's an imaginary line right here and right here, all, and there's a line stretching between it. Always, wherever you move those dots will always be perfectly in the center of those two colors, the mix of those two colors. So basically, if you got yellow and you got blue, then you get green in between it, perfectly. If you get green and you get red, then you get a little yellow in between it, okay? So this is how that is red. Now again, let's take our luminance mix all the way down to zero. I hope I explained that well. <laughs> Um, and let's take our red down. And as you can see, it when I take my red down, the colors start pulling away from the red because we have a little less and less red in there. Let's reload everything. Take our luminance mix all the way down. And let's take our red out a little bit. As you can see, it was just really a lot of red, and then there's a lot of blue, and there's just a little sprinkling of green. Let's take our blue out a little bit. There you go. And now everything's sort of distributed in the middle. Yes, some are hitting red and green and blue, but we want everything, I guess, to be in the center here because not too much. we don't want too much to be at the blue, the red, or the green because that mean, means too much color, is, too much emphasis is put on those colors. And this, of course, is a Rec. 709 chart right here, as you can tell over here as well. And so, say, if we adjust it all the way to red, you see that, you know, of course, everything shoots over to the red. If you pull the green up as well, you realize it turns yellow, the image, of course, and there's, too much, there's a lot of the green now, and there's a lot of the red, and then there's a lot of the yellow. Okay, so now it's hugging the yellow line. And then, of course, if we dried up the blue and dried up the red, there'd be a lot of purple there because now the image is purple and there's a lot of the red and the blue because, of course, that makes up purple. So wherever, whatever side is shining toward, you can see it's shining toward the red here, it's going to be more biased toward that color. And you want to pull it off so it pulls more into the center here. As you can tell, see a jacket up blue, I mean green right here, and it just spearheads into the green. So that is how you use the CIU Chroma chromaticity, correct me if I'm wrong there, <laughs> the CIE chromaticity um, color scope. So I hope you guys liked that video. I hope it was helpful to you guys. If you guys like this video, click that like button down below. If you guys have any questions or comments on this subject of reading color scopes, then leave it down in the comments below. Or if you just want to say hi, I might not say hi back, but okay. And if you guys like videos like this and you want to see more of them, then click that subscribe button down below and I will see you in the next one.